Hi guys, Steve Chilcote from Chilcote Forestry. I'm a consulting forester, a wildlife habitat biologist. And I want to talk to you a little bit about fads today. The other day I saw on the internet where a guy bought a piece of land and, and a guy did a, a plan for it. And you know, it was kind of an odd shaped piece of land like that. And they had all these fancy food plots, trails, bedding areas, access points, blah, blah, blah. You can't just take a piece of ground and draw a bunch of lines on it and expect that to work, okay? You have to be on the ground, boots on the ground. What are the deer doing now? And what do you expect them to do later? And by that I mean, what I usually do is, number one, where is the food? Number two, where is the security cover? So the other day I worked on a property that was 80 acres, so it's a rectangle. Farmland, there's no terrain, it's flat. There's hardwoods over here. There's hardwoods here. Road, ag, Ag, ag. Uh, this field has a, a, a pivot irrigation, so the the round, the, the, it's a circle, so the, the closest that the circle gets is something like that. I'm expecting deer to go in there, or if it's corn, I'm expecting deer to come out of there and get to the food that I'm going to make, okay? So the wind is always out of the north, no matter where you are. Except once in a while you get a south wind at this property, I noticed, just by watching the weather. So on the ground, I took a look at what the wind is doing, what's going on with the soils, what, what soil types. There's different soil types that wind their way through here. There's a soil type up here. Some are better for growing food plots than others. So you have to put your food plots where the appropriate soil is. You can't just draw... Uh, a map of, of ideal food plot situations and travel corridor situations and expect deer to follow that and expect to get a successful food plot. So in this case, when I looked at this hardwood and I, and I went on the, um, uh, the Google Maps and, the, and looked at the history, um, I saw that, that about five or six years ago, there's a clear cut back in there. So I know that that's going to be thick and I'm assuming that deer bedded there. Uh, lots of deer tracks on this property, but they are not staying there. They're not bedding and they're not feeding there. So the point I think I'm trying to make here is that sound forestry practices will always be your go-to plan for any property. So this area needs to be harvested. This area was already clear cut, but up here it needs to be thinned down. So once we get our basal area down to where sunshine can hit the forest floor, and then we put some burn blocks in here, we're planning on maybe, there's a, there's a ditch going that way and a ditch going this way. So I was thinking about doing three burn blocks over on that, that half. Rotate burns when we can. Now, if you're in a state that's burn friendly, uh, that's half the battle. You got it made because burning is the best thing you could do. In, in other words, if that's 50 acres, you got a 50 acre food plot there. Plus you have uh, new growth coming up. We'll get some grasses and forbs in there. New pine trees will come up. Uh, there's going to be hardwoods coming in and then we can adjust with herbicides what hardwoods we want. In other words, if there's stuff that deer don't eat, which is what's there now, um, you know, it's either wide open or it's full of, uh, uh, trees that deer don't prefer. So we're going to try and get food and cover in here. So we got food and cover through forest management. Uh, no one's expense involved, no chainsaw work. I mean, some of these layouts, like this one guy had a, he had this elaborate, plan where there's a travel corridor and you're laying trees out this way and then there's 
bedrooms for deer up here and then there's a there's a sneak trail around the whole kit and caboodle i'm like you're gonna do a lot of chainsaw work and bust your ass all summer and you don't even know if deer are going to use any of that stuff so good forest management will get you the cover and the food that you need so what we want to try and do here of course is to pull deer in from the neighbor from over here, destination food plots are out in the ag, here, here, and here. So we know that they're gonna feed in there, kind of depending on what they're growing. Like if there's soybeans, we know they're gonna be out there. So I want a small food plot here. And the reason is that when I talked to the state forester that did the plan uh, for the forest management of this thing, I told him that my guess was that deer are over here and if we have food down this way we can pull them down and what he told me was this is the uh, number one deer collision car collision spot in the county so good guess deer do cross there a lot so I want a small food plot here so when the wind is right this is a stand location edge of the field Let's say that's soybeans. If you have a south wind, you're going to get deer coming this way, down the edge of that field, cruising for does, stop in for a little bite to eat, and boom. And then deer are definitely going to be coming across the road here because this is all open and the, the woods are close together here. So what we're going to do is uh, two one and a half acre food plots down here, maybe three one acres up. Uh, I like to get about three acres of food and try to pull the prevailing wind is out of the north so we're going to try to pull deer with the wind so that we can sneak up and hunt sneak trails in here i assume that if a deer is feeding in this field he's going to go to the downwind side pull up in here and bed down somewhere so this is where you want to hunt that buck. Maybe put a little hidey hole food plot in there that you might stop in. Uh, but the deer are going to tell you, once you get your food and cover straightened out, the deer will tell you where they want to go, where they want to travel. Now you can enhance those travel corridors. I'm all for that. But to try to make travel corridors and expect deer to just walk down your, your travel corridor, I think that's ridiculous. So I would... Um, you know, I'm not taking anything away from these uh, Midwest guys. Uh, you know, this stuff probably works fantastic in the Midwest because there's no cover. But when you're in a place like Pennsylvania, you know, I'm looking out the window here and I can see 10,000 acres of woods where a deer could just hole up anywhere he wants in there. So it's pretty hard to, to make a travel corridor and expect a deer to walk down. That's the point. So sound regenerative forest management will get you better deer hunting so that's where i come in if you um want somebody to look at your woods uh give me a call uh, if you're uh if you're out in the midwest somewhere or you're too far away from central pennsylvania um, try to find a, a forester in your region that understands hunting, he hunts himself. Don't forget, it, a lot of foresters don't hunt. I'm going to put a link up in the upper corner where you can link to some more videos about putting food plots into a wooded setting. And um, if you like the content, give me a thumbs up and share it with somebody. And if you have anything to say, please comment down below. I'd like to hear from you. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button and click on the bell so you'll be notified when there's a new video. And comment down below, let me know if there's anything you'd like to know more about.